Hey everybody, Innocent here, and in this video, I'm going to explain the concept of rasterization in Photoshop. Why should you rasterize? When should you rasterize? And is there any alternative to rasterizing in Photoshop? And this is coming up. Hello everybody and welcome to the channel once again. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new here, please hit on the subscribe button if you're old here. Thank you so much for showing up. So yeah, here we are in Photoshop. I've got three particular layers over here. I've got the pixel, the vector, and then the smart object. I'm going to use this to explain things to you in a very few minutes. First off, understand that for every software, it has its own rules, guidelines, language, however you want to call it. And Photoshop has the pixel based type of graphics it uses pixels so everything is measured in pixels in photoshop so whenever a foreign material or a foreign layer a foreign image however you want to describe it is brought into photoshop which does not conform to that particular rules it has to be changed into something that photoshop should be able to understand and should be able to work with and the process of converting that particular thing say a vector graphic into a pixel graphic is what we called rasterization now first off what is a pixel file so over here i have this particular layer as the pixel file pixel based graphics are made up of little squares which can be seen when you zoom in on your image so for instance if you have an image and then you try to zoom in let's try to press ctrl t and then zoom out on this one you press enter press ctrl t again and then you try to zoom in again so you realize that whilst you are trying to zoom in again you have you see this particular tiny let me zoom in the more so you, you get to see it so these things that you see around here are what we refer to as the pixel so it means that this particular file is working with the canvas that it has been provided with when you try to expand it it takes the canvas and when you try to compress it again you are trying to force it to something that it is not made up of so it is not going to work out for you now let's try to transform this back to be so small again and then you realize that it is going to even lose more quality because you keep changing its dimension and then the canvas will be confused as to which particular pixel you want to use so that is it for pixel now let's see what it does with vector so vector graphics or in this particular regard vector layers are mapped out using mathematical equation which calculates the edges of the shapes in relation to one another so you realize that these lines will always keep their shape regardless of how big or little you resize them let's see what we did for the pixel we're going to do the same thing for this particular vector file over here so we press ctrl t and we're going to transform it out like this to be very small and then we press ctrl t and then we're going to transform it back again so you realize that they are using lines around the edges so it doesn't change anything it doesn't make any changes at all and this means that no pixel will show when you zoom in it doesn't matter how large you make the graphic the quality will stay the same i'm sure you've already heard this that the best software to design logos is Adobe Illustrator that is pretty much simple because Illustrator is operated in vectors so when a logo is done in Illustrator it gives the particular logo the clarity the size remains the same regardless of how big or small you make it when you are using it on a business card or when you want to make it bigger on a billboard the quality will remain the same it wouldn't lose any quality or graphic now, do you remember this popular saying, when you go to Rome, you have to do what the Romans do? This particular file is a vector. Photoshop is dealt with in pixel. So when you bring a vector file into Photoshop, though it accepts it, it doesn't really become automatically become a part of Photoshop or a Photoshop file. So in order to make this particular vector file a pixel which photoshop understands that is why you have to go ahead you right click and then you rasterize that layer now let me throw more light on this one let's assume your nationality is a Ghanaian like myself and then you travel to the united states 
though you are staying in the United States, but you don't have all access like a citizen of United States would have, right? So in order for you to be accepted by the United States as one of them, you have to go ahead and then you naturalize for them. How amazing naturalize and rasterize goes hand in hand. Now, that will bring us to the second question. Why should you rasterize? Well, with the illustration that I just gave, if you're a citizen of Ghana and then you travel to the United States, you don't have all the rights in the United States like a citizen of the United States would have. So if you're a vector file and then you are brought into Photoshop, though Photoshop accepts you, but you don't have all the necessary functionalities in Photoshop. A typical example is if you want to get, say, this particular side of this shape, and then we try to go for the eraser tool to erase this. The moment you pick the eraser tool, you'd realize that this particular sign will show. And then when you try to click on them, this particular thing will come that this shape must be rasterized before proceeding. So it means that it has to be converted into something Photoshop would clearly understand. Similarly, if you have images like this, I'll get to a smart object very soon so that you get to understand this more. And then you don't rasterize functionalities such as the adjustment layers wouldn't be there available for you. So in order to get all these functionalities, let's go ahead and right click and rasterize this layer. You realize that when you go to image adjustment, all these functionalities are there for us. So the answer to the question is, in order to get all the functionalities of Photoshop working for you on a particular layer, you have to rasterize it. You have to convert it into a particular language that Photoshop understands. And that particular language is a pixel based graphic. So you have to make that particular layer a pixel based. Now at this point, you might be wondering if you are to rasterize vector files to become pixel, that means that the relation is between vectors and pixel. So why then should we rasterize smart objects? Now the first thing that you have to understand is smart objects is the intersection between a vector and a pixel. That is my own definition. That is, it is not a pixel file, neither is it a vector file. So it stands in between the two. Now Photoshop is trying to tell us that if you can't make your nationality known, if you, if you can't determine where you belong to, we can't simply accept you as one of us. Now, this is what I mean. If you zoom this particular smart object out, like we did for the pixel and the vector, let's do it very small. And then you try to zoom it back in. So you zoom it like that. You'd realize that it has lost some kind of quality, but not that much as compared to that of a pixel and not that great as that of the vector was having so it means that it stands in between the two so photoshop is not able to calculate the specific pixels that it is dealing with so it gives photoshop a kind of trouble and as such photoshop says hey you know what if you'll be able to help you with this one we have to turn you into something that we can really understand so all the good treats that we will give to our members you wouldn't have it so if you go to the image and the adjustment you realize that the smart object is not having it if you try to apply the eraser on it you can't apply it if you try to apply say the blur or the smart tool you will not be able to apply it on this particular one so in order to give these functionalities like that of the vector you have to rasterize now question number two is when should you rasterize it is very simple you rasterize anytime you want to unlock all the functionalities on your image now it is quite advisable though that when you are dealing with images and you wouldn't actually apply any form of effect like you level it up or you, you add a kind of like curves or adjustment you wouldn't adjust the image it is better to keep it in a smart object why because some way somehow smart objects try to protect the quality of the image because if you be zooming the image in and out if it is a typical layer it is going to lose its quality for instance this particular image if you rasterize it to become a layer and then you press ctrl t say we are using this on a on a flyer you rasterize this layer and then you transform it to be smaller like this and later on 
along the project he realized the need to make it big again so he pressed ctrl t and then he tried to transform it back you realize that this particular image has lost its quality so what should you do or what can you do to keep the quality you keep it in the smart object such that if along the project you realize that you have to transform it back to be small or big it wouldn't be a problem the last question is is there any alternative to rasterizing in photoshop yeah obviously there are alternatives to this one for instance this particular image you can basically work with a smart object thumbnail that has been provided for you but that one has a restriction like i illustrated if you're going to be scaling it up and down you definitely need to choose another alternative which i'll get into very soon but then if you going to just leave it like it is you can work with a smart object layer thumbnail by clicking or double clicking over here it is going to open in another thing for you you can see that this is in a pixel so you can add all your levels say your levels um curves all the adjustments that you can you want to do you can do it here and once you're done you click over here and then you save it and then it is going to reflect on the layer without touching this particular layer that you are working on better still if you're going to be transforming the image up and down there are alternatives at least photoshop gave you the opportunity to use this layer adjustment over here so you can make use of this layer adjustment so if it is levels that you want to apply you can basically apply your levels over here and if you have the layers to be plenty or many and then you want to you want this particular levels or the layer adjustments will affect just one you just go ahead and then you right click and then it creates a clipping mask so that this particular adjustment is going to affect only the image this case you still have your smart objects and you have your levels that you want to apply without the need to touch the image so even if it becomes necessary that you transform the image it is still going to maintain its quality a bit of it because it is a smart object when it comes to other things like applying say brushes on it you can create a new layer on top of the image and then you apply your brush anything that you want to apply and just like we did for the layer or the adjustment layer you can still clip mask it into the exact layer that you are working on so a quick recap photoshop is a pixel based software which deals in pixels so when foreign files or things like shapes and text that are made in vector are imported into photoshop they have to be transformed into a language that photoshop should understand and that process is what we called rasterization when you rasterize an image you lose kind of its quality especially if you are going to be transforming it up and down make it small and make it big again there are alternatives to rasterizing like using the layer adjustment and using layer mask and using the smart object thumbnail to work things out so now the question is are you going to always be rasterizing your image the next time that you work in photoshop I hope this video gave you a clarity on the concept of rasterization. Let me know in the comment section if this video was helpful. And thank you so much for sticking around to watch this video. I really appreciate you. Thank you for 10,000 subscribers. I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's Innocent here and bye.